virtual reality is fantastic, isn't it? But don't let me tell you, just ask this lady. <laughs> Have you ever walked down the street, looked towards the floor and gone Oh my god, is that my hand? Well, that's what VR is like. Except you're Batman. At this current time, VR gaming is the closest we as a species have got to either being inside a game world, watching off from a distance, or literally be the characters that we know and love from their point of view. Dressed in their clothes, using their make-believe tools to do unbelievable things, and that can make VR gaming seriously feel like the future when every intended element of immersion pulls you in. Oh my god, it's like I'm actually riding a- <laughs> But let's get one thing straight. It ain't perfect. I know many people don't get along well with VR technology due to the motion sickness, you know, using a controller to move yourself around while you're able to look 360 degrees around you, but in reality you're sitting and standing totally still. That can really mess with your brain, and you shouldn't feel alone in reacting like that. Hell, when I first played VR, it was with dread halls on the original build of the Oculus Rift, and I couldn't take more than two steps without feeling the need to vom. Because of that, all of those articles claiming VR is the future of video games are a little insulting if you ask me. Don't feel left behind or socially exempt if you can't get on with it. VR is not for for everyone, especially when you consider that the monetary bar for entry is so ridiculous that it's basically a luxury as far as video games go, so everyone spouting off how revolutionary it is clearly haven't put themselves in the shoes of a standard consumer that these products are trying to sell to. It isn't only expensive, but may not even let you use it in the first place without causing stomach problems. HOLY SHIT HOW MUCH IS THAT?! Luckily, since the days of the original Oculus Rift, the technology has got dramatically better to not only make the experience feel more real, but lessen the chance of sickness because of how more real it feels. VR today tracks your your head movement with tilting and leaning allows you to go in and out of the game world itself. You know, not just look around a fixed perspective like it used to. That is what screwed me up back in the day. But even knowing that, I can't describe to you how nervous I was to finally get my hands on PlayStation's attempt to bring decent quality VR to the masses. I mean, especially since it was much cheaper than its competitors, surely that would mean it wasn't very good. Right? Well today I thought I'd have a little bit of fun and dive right into the PSVR to give you my opinions of the system itself, along with a handful of games. Disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by PlayStation and every opinion here is totally my own, but I did want to let you know that Sony actually sent me a free PSVR headset on the condition that I made a video about it. They sent it to me over two years ago. Sorry, it's late. Okay, well, first of all, let's talk about what you get with the system and for how much money. At its first release in October 2016, the system would have set you back a whopping £350, the same as the PS4 Pro. And that's without the PlayStation camera accessory that's required to use it or any games bundled with it. It may have still been cheaper than competitors back then, but God almighty, I'm glad they cut the price down because otherwise I'd be a lot more negative. So let's discuss the price point of it in 2090. The headset alone has gone down by a ridiculous £120, while most bundles today will net you the headset and camera along with a singular game for a much more doable £250 each. If you ask me, the best bargain is the headset, camera and five games for £300, but I am aware the word bargain is stretching it. Does this thing feel like an expensive high quality product though? Well, in my opinion, it absolutely does, especially compared to other headsets. The PSVR's sleek and clean robotic design looks fantastic, feels nice and smooth with soft rubber cushioning to block out light, and amazingly enough for how complex the technology inside the visor is, it's insanely light and comfortable to wear. You never feel suffocated while wearing it since the main weight of it rests on your forehead and clings onto that dip in the back of your head that you can tighten and loosen to your heart's content. With the flexibility of the rubber as well, it means that adjusting the headset while looking through the eyepiece to get the best view and focus is extremely simple and comfortable even with glasses on without any instance of slipping off for me. I've tested multiple headphones with the headset with every single one of them fitting comfortably and the only things I really hate about this design are firstly the fact that according to multiple reports the soft rubber part for your eyes is actually latex causing some people to get allergic reactions but I couldn't find a definitive source to prove what the material was, so take that lightly. And secondly, this stupid flippy floppy flap of a cable jutting out to the side. Whenever I let it loose, which is the intended idea, it scraped against my ears when I wasn't wearing headphones, meaning I had to push the cable back up its own ass in order to get it stuck into a loop that never dropped down to my ears again. Once I did this, it hasn't dropped out in the two years I've used it, but still, it's a confusing design choice. Within most of the games themselves, though, not only is it great for audience members, since you can see exactly what the player is seeing on the display you connected the HDMI cable, to, but the display in the headset itself is extremely high quality with only occasional instances of texture issues and popping, and the 3D effects never cease to absolutely amaze me. Made even better by the 1080p display for your eyes and the 120 frames per second smoothness to guarantee the best experience it can by using multiple hardware tricks even for games that don't technically run higher than 60. It's confusing, don't ask me, I'm not a VR boff. As long as you set up the camera at the correct height, distance, angle and sort the lighting in your room out properly, the headset also tracks your head movements brilliantly with tilting and leaning, and even allows you 
allows you to look entirely around you with the camera reading multiple light sensors covering the entirety of the device, and even if a game you play is not VR compatible, you can still play the game through the VR like you're looking at a giant screen in a virtual movie theatre. So if you have parents that hate you, just pop some headphones in, sit down and play something totally different to what everyone else is watching on the TV. And if you ever go off center at any point, just press and hold the options button on the DualShock 4 and you'll snap right back to where you're looking at at that moment for maximum comfort. Not to mention it's insultingly easy to set up when compared to other systems. You plug the headset into a box, plug the box into the PS4, HDMI from the PS4 into the box, HDMI from the box into your TV, plug in the camera, sit or stand around one and a half to two meters away and you're good to go. Despite the lower price against HTC or Oculus, consider me massively impressed with the quality of this thing and it's even better now the price has gone down over the years. It's also worth saying that despite me being nearly sick on my friend's desktop keyboard when using the first build of Oculus for the first time, PSVR never got me anywhere near as queasy to the point that I could play for hours, probably because of the smoother performance and accurate head tracking, but I really don't know. But then like I said, I did play the original Kickstarter build of Oculus when I was like 16 or 17, so maybe it's a combination of age and the technology being better, I don't know, but either way, PSVR, much more comfortable than that experience for me. It's also even more important to say that if you're looking to get one of these things right now, there's actually a second version of the PSVR, which I had no idea about until making this video. So the cable issue here that I mentioned, that's no longer a problem. You also don't have this dongle here that you have to use on the original model for headphone jacks and stuff. I suppose that's why the price of this thing has gone down quite a bit. So this is a great start, isn't it? I mean, it's great, what could possibly- Then you see the optional move controllers. By the way, these are the exact same move controllers that we used on the PS3 when the move first came out nine years ago. Why are these so goddamning expensive, Lewis? Louis! I'm not gonna pretend these things aren't good because they really are. Extremely responsive, accurate to every degree of your hand movements and comfortable to hold. Plus I can't get enough of those soft squishy ends that most probably fit nicely in your bum. But aside from using these for a facial massage, the cost of these near decade old controllers that still work from PS3 to PS4 is outright disgraceful. Imagine paying full retail price in 2019 for Alice in Wonderland on the Wii. That's how ridiculous this is. They came out the same year. Stop looking at me like that, Jonathan Deep. I've also heard around the block that using the original PS4 instead of the PS4 Pro with the VR has higher chances of causing sickness because of the lower quality textures and slight differences in performance, but I haven't been able to test that out, so... But with that being said, onto the games. And before I kick off with the ones I paid the most off for this video, firstly, I wanted to apologize for the 30 FPS 720p footage because the only way I could get footage was by recording directly from the PS4 Pro. Trust me, they were like three times smoother and looked much better in real life. And secondly, I wanted to ease you into the world of VR lest we all begin to flop all over the floor. So to start off nice and easy, let's have a quick look at four games that I've either played extensively before this video or I've made reviews about, just to ease everybody in, okay? Let's go. Firstly, Doom VFR. If you played the 2016 Doom reboot, really enjoyed it, and want to see down the throat of a caca demon, this is the game for you. Even though the story is pretty bad, it's at least tongue in cheek and self aware. And honestly, what this game should have focused on was fast paced VR action with lots of futuristic guns, Hellspawn running directly at your face, a decently long campaign for VR, and plenty of 3D gore, which this game delivers in spades. This is one of the first games I recommend people when PSVR is the subject, but if you're new to VR or get motion sick easily, be aware that this is still Doom totally unfiltered, so it's fast, aggressive, and could potentially cause bowel upset. Until Dawn Rush of Blood is another one I highly recommend for how much damn fun it is, and how it's exactly like one of those ghost trains you see at the fair but not shit. Rush of Blood is a spin-off to Until Dawn and is weirdly enough a first-person on-rail shooter where by using two extremely well-tracked handguns, you must break targets and kill monsters throughout many different arcade stages that all look and feel totally unique from each other. It's engaging, looks really damn great, there's a downright pleasurable amount of creepy VR scares that always remain as more of a fun surprise than outright horrifying, and as a whole, it's much easier on the stomach since you're sitting still on a car. Well, except those parts where you go down a drop, it feels eerily real and your stomach may get a bit confused while your body isn't going down a slope causing your body to overcompensate, leading to yeah that. Oh, hello there, friend. Do you need an aspirin? This is also the game I used to introduce my family friends to VR gaming if they like a bit of horror, and the results of these introductions can be rather hilarious. <laughs> Then we have The Inpatient, another spin-off to Until Dawn, except unlike Rush of Blood, The Inpatient is feces. And this closes us off with PSVR Worlds, which even allows you to see your own controller on the screen. Whoa, man, it's like I'm actually holding a controller. If you've never played anything VR related before, then just the menus will impress you with how you're able to interact with them. And I could bounce these random balls back and forth for hours on end. Go away! Uh, go away! Uh, go away! 
Ah, okay, fine, fine, I'll stop messing around. There are five mini games on this disc that all have you doing different things and showcase the VR in special ways. The first being VR... Lug, which is a downhill foot first skateboarding arcade racer thing with time limits and is good for around five or ten minutes of your time. Danger Ball, which is two words I never thought I'd see together since I found that strange lump in my pants, and just so happens to be VR Pong with your head doing the work, another good game for around ten minutes or so. Scavenger's Odyssey, which is a 30 minute long FPS that's alright, nothing special though and pretty repetitive, but at least gives you some insane visuals when moon jumping around space rocks. Ocean Descent, which is just you doing nothing but looking around at fish from inside a cage for ten minutes, you know, it's kind of like a special effects show. But with sharks! And then you get the London Heist, which even though is the same length as Scavenger's Odyssey, is easily the best demonstration and execution of the VR tech, and not only because you get to use your hands with the move controllers. The story is better, the action is more realistic and engaging, the characters feel like they're actually there with the things you can do with them, and they even react properly to the way that you move your body and arms. Don't be a naughty word. And I can't get enough of these accents, they're so comically overdone, I can't help but love these guys. Oh, I said no one was allowed up You were right, no one, am I, Frank? I've got any security passes you asked for. Get out of here! Jesus mate. Christ, who said that? Why, why the hell would you do that? Also, with your hand movements being the centre point, you can get away with doing so much shit it's borderline laughable. Hey, you aren't so scary really, are you? Come here and let me tickle your little chinny chin chin. Cash! For the job! Not the horses! Oh yeah? Well I don't want your money! You wanna see a magic trick, do you? Eh? Okay, watch this. Whoa, I'm a bloody wizard, mate. You can't handle me, can you? Dude, you know, you have way too much rubbish in your car. Allow me to clean up for you. There we go. Much better. So yeah, PSVR World. It's all right. It's not too bad. It is more of a glorified tech demo than anything else, but it's a damn fine tech demo with a nice mix of games. So yeah, I'm all right with it. But did you know that this game was never bundled with the system at launch and costed nearly the same amount as a AAA game on its own? What? Yes, this demo disc that gives you at most an hour worth of actual gameplay never came bundled with any PSVR at launch and Sony felt like it was worth around 30 quid when it came out. Give me a break guys, this is another reason why the bundles nowadays are such good value, because in comparison to the old days they can piss right off. Okay, so at this point, before jumping into the PSVR exclusive games, it is very important to mention that there are quite a number of games that are VR compatible, meaning that you essentially get two games for the price of one. You get an entire VR version and the standard version. So there's games that do that like, well, like this, Tetris Effect. Let's see how this is then. This game is downright amazing. I, I mean, yeah, it's still just Tetris at its core with no majorly different mechanics, but this is the best damn version of Tetris I've ever played. Sorry, Tetris 99, you simply cannot compare. As you can see from the footage here, the game isn't VR entirely, but instead more flat with colorful 3D particle effects flying around you to spice up the psychedelic nature of the game. When the game is booted up and it told me about this sensual, spiritual experience it was claiming to want to give me, my initial reaction was, Oh, well, you're a little bit up yourself, aren't you? Because I mean, how could Tetris be anything more than just Tetris. Well, to put it short, for a game that I was only supposed to play for a few minutes to get footage, it ended up getting me stuck here for hours, completely zoned out. The atmosphere of this game is out of this world immersive, and you have to play it with headphones. As you clear a set amount of lines on the Tetris grid, you enter a brand new themed area with its very own zen-like or absolute banging musical track, with its own unique flashy effects that react to every time you clear lines, make hard drops, do T-spins, and get Tetris clear outs. And even when you move the pieces before placing them, you activate new samples for the music depending on the world that you're in, which got me totally connected to the game and changed it into something more than Tetris, almost like a rhythmic puzzle game. Once you think, oh, they must have run out of ideas for visuals, they've run out of themes, it surprises you five minutes later with something you never expected. And it's, it's hard to describe, but all I can do is tell you to play it. I loved this game. And the only thing I wasn't too fond of were the menus, since they appear on the headset right on the edge of the eyepieces, and anything that goes there is blurred, so I was unable to really see that part of the text. Other than that, this is the best Tetris and one of the most enveloping puzzlers I've ever played, enhanced that much more with the VR and some damn good headphones. After this, we have the Wipeout Omega Collection, a fantastic racing 
racing game with tons of content as it stands, but now with nothing more than a free update, a fully VR compatible mode is on this game, allowing you to play the entire thing in VR. This, as a Wipeout fan since I was a child, is one of the coolest things I've ever played. It's virtual reality Wipeout. What more do I need to say? I got a huge kick out of the pilot seat view, aside from the disappointing fact that your pilot itself doesn't move their arms or body like they're actually doing something, but I honestly thought the third person view was even cooler, since I could not only freely look around the gorgeous racetracks, but also look around the bends of the tracks and vertical ramps to see where I should anticipate to steer, and could even see what enemy crafts were coming up to the sides of me to preemptively bump them away. In my opinion though, easily the best use of this VR compatibility feature is with Free 7. Not only do you get the full game on the base PS4, which is already a damn good version running at 60 FPS, but you also get a fully fledged start to end VR version with head assisted aiming, new controls, every single scare being so uncomfortably close to your face you swear you can smell their breath, and you even get to play as Rayman. Well Ethan, you know, I wouldn't worry so much about any of this because your entire arm isn't even there. I already think that Resident Evil 7 is a tense game, but when pairing it with VR it's another damn experience entirely. This may get old and repetitive to say, but it really does feel like you're actually there. It's frightening. And the fact it's mostly in locations completely relatable makes the horror hit even closer to home when you feel like you can reach out and touch the objects you'll often be hiding behind. It's worth saying though, if you're claustrophobic, don't bother, just, 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 just don't play this game. I'm sad to say I couldn't get that far into the main game though because I can only play RE7 VR in bursts. The motion sickness doesn't really affect me in this game, but when you consider that my blood rate was going through the roof when you're right there in the middle of these tense as tat scenarios, this coupled with the VR motion actually nearly forced me into a state of being sick. Yes, Resident Evil 7 nearly made me think Drop. And god damn did I love it. Sometimes though, two games for the price of one sounds like a deal too good to be true. And that's the case with Don't Knock Twice. Let me guess, we're gonna knock twice, aren't we? Well that's wonderful, we've already broken the first rule the game is named after, I've lost all respect for it. Now I don't mean to be a spoil sport, but as far as VR compatible games go, this one was the worst I've ever played. Based on the story of a mother, abducted daughter and an urban legend of an old witch, Don't Knock Twice on PSVR knocks it out the park right out the gate with some of the most unresponsive motion controls I've ever seen, a stupid system of picking up items where instead of just reaching out like most VR games let you do, you're stuck with hitting triangle to extend your arms out like the missing member of the village people in order to give yourself a brief moment to to pick up the item as your hand glides past it, and the controls. Oh boy, sit yourself down and listen to this. By default, you teleport everywhere, which lots of games do. Even Doom VFR has an option that lets you do that. But here, the screen goes black every single time you move, sucking you out the atmosphere and causing headaches. Once I changed that to smooth movement, it was then I discovered you also cannot turn left. No, you didn't mishear me. You cannot turn left. There's only a button to very slowly pan to the right, so if there's a direction over to the very slight left you need to move to, tough, you need to agonizingly pace yourself in a slow circle around until you face where you need to go. So by this control scheme, I assume that also means you're never in danger in this game because trying to move is like escorting an elderly man to a bathtub with a toaster. So at this point I scrapped the motion controls and went with the main controller, which was a lot better, but no matter what I did, the game would not allow me to turn around notes and items I picked up around the place, making the only interactivity in this game pointless, and the first person movement feels busted since your strafing movement gets locked wherever you were initially facing, even when changing viewing angles, until you let go of the stick and reposition where you are moving, leading to instances of me feeling drunk most of the time, which isn't only annoying, but pretty great if you want to have a good old throp. The VR effects are nice, the house has a terrific number of subtle creative scares, and when it works, the atmosphere is the main selling point. It can get pretty creepy, but for controls this bad? <laughs> nah, mate, I pass. I'm not even going to bother with the non-VR version for this one. I'm mining. Okay, so let's start moving on to the completely VR built games, shall we? Starting with Fruit Ninja VR. Well, have you ever played Fruit Ninja before on touchscreen devices? Great, because this is exactly the same thing, but now you get to play it in VR with your very own samurai sword, I'll have you know. Honestly, I'm amazed by the responsiveness of the controls here. Not only does it feel really good to swipe through the juicy stuff, but you can even use the blade in different ways, exactly how you'd expect, depending on the edge of the blade you use and how gentle you are with it. This is impressive tech here, and it's much deeper than what the original iPhone and Android game offers. At the end of the day though, yeah, it's fun, it's satisfying, it's addictive, it looks cool, but it's just Fruit Ninja at a premium price for the sake of the VR. It's fine for a few minutes, but only makes you wish you were playing a Star Wars VR game instead. And by the way, I know there is an X-Wing VR mission in Star Wars Battlefront on PS4, but that game is poo-poo and I'm not rebuying it for the sake of one VR mission. Thanks! Right, so let's move on to the next game then. Huh?
Where did I put it? I'm in shit. I'm going to go like Batman. Christ, I thought I got away from you. Yeah, you really did. Why did you move house? Because you were there. Oh, don't be like that. I got you a present. Well, if giving it to me means you'll leave me alone, let's have it. Okay, here goes. It was a bit spiky. Leave. <laughs> I've got a question for you. Have you ever wanted to see Bruce Wayne's parents get shot in VR from the point of view of a child? Because that's Batman Arkham VR. In all seriousness though, wow, this game looks spectacular. There's so much detail and depth all around you that you actually feel like Gotham is right there for you to touch. But if you have a problem with heights, yeah, 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 don't play this because you'll throp. <laughs> for the game itself, well, it's extremely easy and an experience more than anything else since you only get to teleport to predetermined locations and solve puzzles in extreme linear ways, but being able to look down at your utility belt, grab a bat gadget from your hips and use it, that makes it all worth it. And I totally lost my shit when you finally get all of your gear on, look in this mirror and see that Batman is mirroring your movements exactly. I am him. I mean, like, what? That's it. Jeez. There's mysteries to solve with scanning the environment and playing crimes back, almost escape room-esque sequences that test your perception of the environment, times where you fling a batarang wherever you want to. It's kind of restrictive, yeah, but it is pretty cool. I won't lie. The game recommends you stand up while you play and I'm in full agreement on that so make sure the PS camera is above the TV because if you sit down not only does your belt go so high up your chest you'll never find your mm. bat nips but also because the game expects you to fully turn your body around more than once, move in and out of multiple places to press buttons and pull switches and also because I couldn't for the life of me grab this key from Alfred because my controller kept going out of range when I was sitting down. <laughs> Master Bruce. Shut up, Alfred, I'm trying! Oh, finally, I picked it. Oh, what? Oh, damn you, Alfred! Did you also know that the penguin is made of steel? One of my boys comes back. Because he is. The only major disappointment of the game, though, is the fact that it only lasts you <clears throat> one single hour and costed me more money than PSVR Worlds did. I mean, at least PSVR Worlds has replayability to the minigames, but this, this is an insulting price for such a little game on offer here. It's not even that life-changing where length no longer is an issue. So if you're interested, Interested, wait for a big price drop. I'd say if it were free, it was underselling itself because it is genuinely very impressive and fun, but this is way too much for the package. You thought Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes was bad? Well, at least Ground Zeroes had a lady in it with an exploding mossy garden. And speaking of mossy gardens, here's Moss. So I know this sounds crazy and all, but I think this may be one of the best VR games I've ever played. Not because it's mechanically amazing or mind-blowingly epic, but because it uses the VR in one of the most charming ways I've ever seen that elevates the game into pure magic. Moss is an action puzzle platformer and it reminds me a lot of Tearaway actually, you know, taking a rather simple platformer all things considered, but allowing you as a person to be one of the characters within the game world instead of just an observer, and then allowing you to break the fourth wall, so to speak, with the technology on offer to make for some adorably creative puzzles and platforming challenges. This is essentially the VR version of Tearaway, and by peeping around the corners of environments for secrets and grabbing objects and enemies within the game world physically with your controller, while at the same time moving, jumping and fighting your way through a 3D pop-up storybook aesthetic bustling with tiny little life, makes this one of the most memorable and vibrant fantasy worlds in gaming history. And your main character, Quill, she totally sells it on her own. Not only is she monstrously cute and you can pet her, <laughs> but she even uses sign language towards your character and therefore the player in order to include practically anyone looking to get into VR gaming in a nice and relaxing way. You also only really end up using three action buttons in total for grabbing with the controller with the trigger, jumping, attacking and dodging as Quill with the X and square button and the left stick to move. And the combat and logic, physics and timing puzzles are engaging but not really that taxing yet it really doesn't need to be. This is the ultimate VR beginners game as far as I'm concerned and even if you are a VR veteran you need to experience this one for its sheer unadulterated Cute. But if the cuteness is too much for you, might I recommend Drive Club VR? I mean, it's completely and utterly inoffensive and does what you need it to do very well, so I can't complain about anything really. If you want a driving game with some extremely convincing virtual reality from inside some of your favourite cars, just turn to Drive Club VR. It's a huge campaign-based driving simulator with dozens of cars and tracks guaranteeing a freshly exciting race every time, along with the frightening realism of the detailed interiors of each and every car. And being able to do a race while looking in the rear and side view mirrors is something that I thought was really cool in the PS1 day. 
days, but now being able to lean and physically adjust your angle to see cars coming up behind you and look out every window for cars coming up to the side is simply crazy. If someone told me that this was going to be in the future of first person racing games, I wouldn't have believed them. And it's utterly terrifying when you crash. <laughs> I even love the addition of being able to pick individual times of day for each track for that extra dash of variety. And the visual detail going as far as to have cars behind you flash headlights through the back windows is exactly what I was hoping for. It's not incredible or anything, but for a driving VR game, you really can't go wrong here. This one is a lot of fun. Just remember to take the headset off when you're done. Wow, it's like I'm actually driving a car! <laughs> Sometimes though, you don't want to drive, you want to shoot things. And that's good because PSVR has a gun! To my knowledge, Farpoint and Doom VFR are the only games I currently own that are compatible with the AIM controller, but for now I'm just going to play Farpoint with it. And my lord, this controller may be worth a pretty penny, but hot damn does it work like a dream. Not only is it very comfortable to hold with the buttons for fingers and thumbs and analog sticks being in perfect places, but the entire thing tracks your movement so well I'm convinced it's witchcraft. It can't be anything else. Swear to god, you try explaining this. It's only reading the glowy squishy ball. How does it know I'm doing this? I never thought I'd live to see the day as a man who plays games for a career where we'd be able to hold a gun in a virtual reality game and manually look down our sights like a proper soldier aiming at things with insanely good accuracy, no delay at all and vibration feedback. <laughs> I haven't enjoyed peripheral gunplay in a game this much since I played Rambo Arcade like a decade ago. By the way, I should have asked, do you not like spiders? If not, don't play Farpoint. The game sees you walking around a desolate planet all on your own while these things attack you. And these little bastards are outright disgusting and honestly gave me the sweats a little bit from how they dig up from the ground to ambush you and jump right at you facehugger style. No joke, I swatted my hand in front of my face when I first saw that happening. And for the rest of the game, yeah, it's a basic first person shooter, but made that much more special from the brilliance of the aim controller. And Luckily from what I played, the game never required me to turn my body totally around so that the controller orb went off camera and couldn't be registered, so whenever the enemies got behind me, the AI seemed to jump back in front of me again, which I do massively appreciate. I mean, they do go off to the sides, and you can aim off to the sides, but they never went 180 degrees behind me. The potential of this is staggering. You know what? This could be the resurgence of light gun games. It looks and feels great. Can we maybe get House of the Dead VR? Or Vampire Knight VR? A man can only dream. Okay, so while on topic, let's get all the spacey things out of the way. Eve Valkyrie is next. Let's go. Well, this is a nice cockpit. Very nice indeed. What are we getting ourselves into then? Three, two, one. <laughs> what is this? Eve pukery? Yeah, sorry guys, but out of any VR game I've played so far, this one tossed and turned my stomach more than my own wash basket. Scavenger's Odyssey at least let you stay grounded on flat surfaces in between occasional jumps. Here, there's no remorse. You're barrel rolling, flipping around, spinning upside down, speeding up, slowing down, trying to focus on one point of interest. This game will most likely make you throp <laughs> everywhere. I don't feel like I'm missing out too much by not playing it though, since the lack of music or a pause button and the presence of loot boxes says to me that this is a space battle royale game at its core. And I don't enjoy those games, so even if I wasn't in stomach misery, I wouldn't give Eve Valkyrie a second thought anyway. Not even the gameplay saves it for me to make any potential chunder worth it. Once you get over the VR, you fly, use basic cannons, lock on missiles, super attacks when charged, and spend minutes on top of minutes chasing after tiny fast moving targets until they or you blow up. There's nothing really to it. Yeah, I've always wanted to play Superman 64 in VR. More advanced training modules are available in the training section. Now it's time to show me what you've got. <laughs> Nope, 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 nope. Thank you very much. I wouldn't ask me to do that unless you want extra chunks in your soup. I think I'll be a lot safer with this game, eh? Skyrim VR. Would you hate me if I told you this was the first time I've ever properly sat down and played this game? No. Well, it is, and honestly, I cannot begin to imagine going through the entire hundreds of hours long epic quest in a VR headset, but the fact that there is even an option to is extremely commendable. Especially since this does everything VR related pretty splendidly, even if it's a little bit too difficult in motion controller mode. Even the easiest battles become a life or death situation when you try to remember what face button on which move controller moves you forward and back, and which buttons rotate you left and right, all the while getting the hang of lifting a shield to block and counter swing with a sword. Even though it feels fantastic to get it right, this is something you need to sink hours into just to get the hang of it properly, let alone finish the story of it. But hey, the rest works brilliantly and I'm sure it's great in standard controller mode, so if you like Skyrim and want it on VR, I can confidently say that you're gonna like this. Unfortunately though, this video is getting ridiculously long so I have to stop at some point, but luckily I think I've saved the best game for last. Welcome.
to the American dream. Do you want to know how great this game is? Well, the box explains it all. Oh, oh, oh dear. No, no, bad dog, down boy, down boy. And just check out the back of the box. We believe guns should play a key role in the lives of all good Americans. Oh, journey through the life of an average American patriot as we teach you how guns can help you through key moments of life. Oh, bullets. Oh. You know what my favourite bit of the entire back of the box is though? It's rated 16 plus for substances, bad language, and funnily enough, not violence. I'm not sure if this was intentional or not, maybe it was, I don't know. What do you do in this game? Well, you play through your entire life from birth to adulthood and everything in between, doing what everyone else does in their mundane existences, so in a sense it's not that exciting as a VR game really. You know, it's pretty basic stuff, you eat from guns, high five your dad with guns, knock on the door for mummy with guns, tidy your room with guns, make burgers with guns, get the neighbour's attention with guns, make cotton candy and feed it to your date with guns, it's pretty bland really. And I'm not about to go into a deep political rant right now, I'm aware that's not why you're here, but my god this game had me laughing. It's sheer cheek poking at America with their weaponry is savage, and it really helps that the guns in the game itself are really fun to use, and what makes it truly amazing is not only the sense of humour, but strangely enough the reloading. You hit two buttons on the side of your railcar chair, slow down time, and slide these little magazines straight in that pop up from the chair. Do it with both at the same time and it gets so satisfying it feels like John Wick, but the dog isn't dead. This is genuinely the best feature of the game, along with the tiny American flags on the chambers every time you run out of ammo, and the fact that in order to use and reload your bolt action single shot rifle, you need to use another gun in your left hand that has a wooden hand stapled onto it. I mean, come on, that's funny. <laughs> It's not the best game on VR, it's a bit straightforward and visually simple, but if you want to laugh, go for it. It's great at giving you that, but I'd just rather play Rush of Blood for the gameplay. And with that, this video has gone on long enough, wouldn't you agree? So for today, I'm going to be done with PSVR, but have no fear, I'm not done with it entirely. I mean, Christ almighty, I have yet to get through Res Infinite, Astrobot Rescue Mission, The Persistence, even Star Trek Bridge Crew. This in particular, I've heard some hilarious stories about, so consider me very excited for whenever this next part of PSVR video is coming. Out. If you look below this video, there's going to be a pinned comment from myself asking you to request me some PSVR games that look terrible or look brilliant, whatever, look funny, anything. I'm willing to take any suggestions because I'm going to make this into a new series. I don't know when I'm going to do a part two to PSVR, but I will do at some point, I'm sure. So there's going to be a buttload more games there. And since I'm done talking about the system itself, it will be basically mostly nothing but PSVR games. To quickly summarise the PSVR itself, though, at this stage, well, if you aren't looking for HTC Vive levels of mapping out a large square room and investing thousands in the perfect VR experience, the PSVR as a whole is incredible for the price. I know it's still expensive, but it is such a well-made piece of tech for the price, with oodles of games and experiences to keep you occupied for a long time. And even if not, being able to play standard PS4 games through it is cool enough on its own, especially if your family like to watch the main TV in your house. It's essentially an external display stapled onto your eyes. And I really do have to commend it for the amount of settings available in most of the games to adjust control styles, vignette strength, camera panning modes, and tons more in order to make sure your VR is treating you as good as it can be. There's more of an attempt to appeal to everyone than I was expecting in the simplest way possible. But yeah, if I play any more VR games today, I'm gonna fuck <coughs> myself. So if you don't mind, I have some important business to attend to. Wait, how does... How... Does he accidentally sit on that thing? <laughs> Hey there everybody, I just had some chicken and thank you so much for staying until the very end of today's video. It means a lot to me, it means I'm entertaining you for a good solid chunk of your life, so that really, really means a lot, thank you. The outtakes will be on in just a second, so please stay tuned for that. But firstly, I would just like to thank every single name on the screen right now who have supported me via my Patreon page, which you can find in the description below, along with my Instagram and my Twitter and all sorts of other things. I'm having uh, a couple of switch arounds with a few companies um, over the next couple of weeks, so um, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, stay tuned um, and you'll see what happens. But yeah, thank you so much and special, special thanks before the outtakes come on to the top tier patron supporters for this month. Basil, I have a portal gun, Exopaz, Matthew Hubble, Mills Kahai, Brandon Brandon, Kirsten B, Cyberpunk Symphony, Nicole Gunara, Dave Marshall, Nathan Young, The Game Shed, Daniel Leon, Mitchell Reed, Gamer Muhammad 2017 and A.D. Thornton Smith. Thank you so much, every single one of you amazing people. Well, today I thought that I'd have a little bit of fun and dive right into the PSVR to give you my thoughts on the system itself, along with a... Oh. <laughs> well, today I thought I'd have my... Mice, I'd have, I thought I'd have mice today. But even knowing that, I couldn't describe how... Uh. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> why, am I, why am I disgusted by it? God's sake, what are you doing now? <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> Carers, why did you get a car? Virtual reality is fantastic, isn't it? Should we rename you Face Palm? Is that your new name? Should we make a new show? Face Palm the Hound? It's inviting Palm himself the... up. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. All right, all right. You know what? Yeah. Comfy? Yeah?